Hi, I'm Phil from Simply Rhino and in this video I'm going to take a look at creating this simple sun study animation from Rhino 7 and Keyshot 10. Now we can of course create a sun study animation straight from Rhino. But by using Keyshot we can animate not only the sun but also the camera and the objects themselves. The starting point for this animation is this Rhino model of an apartment block and the surrounding context. The layers are organized on a per material basis so that we can set up materials quickly once the data is inside of Keyshot. In the Rhino model I've created these nine surfaces that sit on the underside of the ceiling and these will become the internal lighting objects for the apartment block once we're inside Keyshot. If I run the animation again you'll see that as well as the sun movement there's a camera zoom and the lights in the apartment block turn on at dusk and off just before the end of the animation. So we'll look at creating these three separate elements in Keyshot. Back in Rhino I've applied a single neutral material to all of the objects and I'll use the Keyshot live linking plugin to push the data to Keyshot 10. Once the model opens in Keyshot the single material is retained along with the named camera that I created in Rhino. And if I go to the scene manager the Rhino layers are all there in the apartment block model set. So my next task now is to apply a simple Keyshot material to each one of these layers and then save the file. Once this is done I'm going to go to the lighting tab and check that I just have the basic lighting mode enabled. I'm going to change this later but for now the basic mode is going to give me fairly quick previews of the scene. Next I'm going to go to the environment tab and then the HDRI editor and I'm going to switch from image to sun and sky. Next I'll choose my location and I'll select Madrid from the list here and I'll set the date to the 9th of August 2021. I'll pull back the time a little bit here and looking at the shadows I'm just going to rotate the environment to get those shadows coming over to the right like so. Once the environment is roughly set I can now add the animation. I can do this by right clicking on environment here and select add animation and I'll choose sun and sky day arc. Doing this launches the animation panel with the timeline editor and the properties panel and gives me a preset animation that starts at dawn and ends at dusk based on my chosen location and time of year that I previously set here. Also in this panel I can see that the animation is set to a default of 5 seconds. Now that's a little bit short for me so I'm going to change this to 15 seconds. In the timeline editor here I'm just going to pull back on this little slider here just so I can see all 15 seconds of the animation in the timeline without scrolling. Now if I drag the playhead I can scrub through the animation just like I can in a video editor. OK now you'll remember that we had some lights in the animation and in order to be able to see those I really want to extend the end of the animation further into the night. So I'm going to make the start time 5 a.m. and the end time 10 p.m. Now when I scrub the playhead through the latter part of the animation I can clearly see those internal lights. Next I'm going to add the camera animation. I'm going to go to my active camera in the project tab this is the save camera from Rhino and I'm going to right click on it and choose add zoom animation. The new animation is added to the timeline and once more it will default to a length of 5 seconds from the playhead position. I'm going to drag this out to 15 seconds or of course I can do this here 
by typing the value into the Properties pane. What I want to do here is to have my existing camera view at the end of the animation and zoom into this from a wider focal length. So I'm going to set my start focal length to 20mm and my end focal length to the current 35mm. Next I can preview this zoom motion and to make this easier to see it may be worth going to the window menu and selecting the geometry view. Once I'm happy with the motion, I can get a better idea of what's going on by rendering out a preview animation. I'll do this by clicking on the Preview button in the Timeline Editor. Now I can play through the animation and I can check that the path of the sun and the camera movement looks OK. I may need to reduce the exposure at some stage here as it looks a little bright at midday, but I can see that generally things are looking OK. However, just at the start here I can see where the horizon of the sun and sky environment is and this just needs to be lowered slightly, so I'll look at this in a moment. I can save the animation preview if necessary, but for now I won't bother with this. But I will, however, save the Keyshot file itself. Next, I want to go to the start of the animation and go to the Environment tab here and go to Settings and just reduce the height of the environment, just slightly, just to get rid of that little bit here. Next, I want to look at the lights. If I drag the playhead all the way to the end of the timeline, then I can see that the lights stay on constantly throughout the animation. What I really want is for them to come on at dusk and go off before the end of the animation. So I'll drag the playhead to dusk and I can clearly see that the area lights are on. And I'll use this point as a position in the timeline for when I want the lights to come on. Before I add the animation, I'm going to go to the Camera tab and I'm going to lock the active camera, just so I don't inadvertently move anything whilst I'm working. I'm going to go to my Material tab here and open up the Area Light material. Now, you'll see that I have a fairly high value for this Area Light, which means that it is visible during the day part of the animation. If I now go into the Material graph here, then what I can do is to right click on the canvas and then go to Animation and I can select Colour Fade. Now I won't connect this Colour Fade yet but if I double click on the Colour Fade here you'll see the properties for this and what I can do here is to create a simple black and white ramp or gradient. In simple terms black is off and white is on and a grayscale value will dim the illumination. So, at the start here I want to make this black so that the area light is off and then I want to add in another marker and move this fairly close to the first one and make this white. Next I want to add another marker here and push this close to the end and make that one white. So, what's going to happen here is that when we apply this colour fade to the area light, the area light is going to turn on gradually and turn off gradually. So, I'll connect the colour fade to the area light and adjust the area in the timeline where the animation is going to take place. Now that I've added the animation, the area light is off apart from the animated area. As I move the playhead here in the middle of this area, I can see the light is on and if I move the playhead backwards I can see the light comes on gradually. Okay, 
That all looks good, but I'll just render out another preview to make sure. OK, that all looks good. The horizon is now at the correct height and the area lights come on at the correct time. As well as playing the preview, I can scrub along the preview timeline here. Once I'm happy with the animation, I can make any necessary tweaks to the materials, environment, illumination, etc. And one important thing I want to do here is to go into the lighting tab and switch now to interior lighting mode. This will mean that my images will take longer to generate but that the quality of the illumination is going to be a lot better. Now I can go to the render menu and select render. And to render out the complete animation I can first of all switch to animation and I can set my image size here and I'll set it to 1920 by 1080 pixels. I can choose either the work area or frame range or the entire duration of the animation and I can choose whether to output to a video in a number of different formats or I can choose to output a number of still frames and put those together in a video editor. As with static rendering I can choose layers and passes but more important here I can go into options and I can set my options for quality and then I can either press render or add this to a queue to render out later on. So that's what I wanted to cover in this video. Thanks for watching and please leave any comments below. If you found this video useful then please hit the like button and remember that to keep up with the latest developments in Rhino and Keyshot you can subscribe to this channel. At Simply Rhino we offer training for Rhino and all its key plugins including Keyshot so check out our website for more details. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch up with you in the next video.